Uh, you spoke uh, not quite long ago during a TEDx session where you also chronicled some of these issues uh, of uh, insurgency and uh, militancy with some of the groups. If we were to go with what you spoke uh, during your TEDx talk, don't you think that was why the military moved against uh, this particular group, this Islamic movement in Kaduna? No, no. Yeah, I, I remember the TEDx talk very well and I would urge those that are listening to go and listen to what I said there. You know, the problem we're having here in this country when it comes to Islamic fundamentalism, and I've done a lot of research on this, is essentially with the uh, Sunni, the extremist Sunni Muslims. That is the Salafists, the Wahhabists, uh, the ISIL, Al-Qaeda type characters who have a complete misunderstanding of Islam and who have used violence as a means to effect their purpose and to effect change. These are Sunni Muslims. These are also purportedly Sunni Muslims. They're not Shia Muslims. In the entire history of this country, we've never had problems in terms of terrorism with the Shia sect or the, what they call Shia Muslims. Um, my fear, and I raise it in the open letter, is that when our military gets up for whatever reason and kills between 500 to 1,000 Shia Muslims, levels their homes, shoots their leaders, um, digs up their burial sites, um, and terrorizes them for whatever reason, um, you are, stand the danger of waking up a monster which you just don't want to wake up because the Shias have immense support from places like Iran, from groups like Hezbollah, which is another very powerful, one of the most, probably the most powerful militia in the Middle East. It's a Shia group. And you don't want to invite them inadvertently into the Nigerian conflict. Right now, the conflict we have is essentially the state against an extremist Sunni Muslim group. But if you continue to kill Shias in this country and persecute them, you are going to invite disaster because the Shia support groups will come in from Iran, from Hezbollah, and so on and so forth. And this is something that I think, and I think we don't want. And I also think it's absolutely fundamental that where mass murder uh, is, is, is committed by our military or by anybody in this country, I think we should all sit up and condemn it, regardless of what the circumstances were. Mass murder. It's mass murder. Crimes against humanity are crimes against humanity. And I think it's absolutely absurd and abominable that the government has not come out to condemn what happened on that day, the slaughter of these Nigerians, whether they're Shia Muslims, Christians, or whatever. These are Nigerian people, and they have the right to life, and they, they, nobody has the right to bomb their homes, dig up their graves, slaughter them like flies, and terrorize them. Well, Chief I mean, uh, ever since this government came in, the president had gone... Uh, rallied Lake Chad Basin Commission. He approved $100 million. Uh, I think at that time, in June or thereabout, they released $21 million. He's got the support of all those in that commission. He's been to the African Union, getting support from uh, the West, as a matter of fact. But now you hear people talk about the morale of the troops that is high. And everyone talks about providing that kind of leadership, which they say was lacking. So these are all that was geared towards ensuring that this fight continues. But reading perhaps uh, some of your text, there are many who will be under the impression that, well, this government is just buck passing and not folding their sleeves and picking up the gauntlet. Look, listen, I, um, the, the, problem, the problem here is this. You can't prosecute a war by propaganda. You say morale is high amongst the troops. We both know, or we all know, this is not true. We know the kind of things that our soldiers are going through. Their morale is low. Many of them are being killed without being celebrated. Many of them are not getting paid their salaries on time. Things are not easy. And I'm a great supporter and believer in the military. I've always been. I think they deserve a better deal. You spoke, you spoke about Chad Basin and money being spent here and there, and that they're making efforts, the president making efforts. Well, I wish it were all true. When this government came on board, or came into power, Chad, the Cameroonians, and Niger Republic were working with us to fight Boko Haram. Since President Buhari has taken power, the Chadians, who are a critical part of this fight against Boko Haram, have pulled out of this alliance. They, for, you know, for reasons best known to themselves, they have pulled out, and they're not helping us in this fight anymore. That is a cause for concern. What is it that President Buhari's government has done? 
to put them in a position where they feel they have to put out. We cultivated them. Jonathan and Mitchell cultivated them. Now we've lost a vital ally in the fight. So things are not that rosy. And I don't take any pleasure, and I do not delight in telling you this. I say this because I expect more from our government. I expect better from our president. And I recognize the fact that he was a great war hero during the time, of the, the time that we fought in Chad. And he led our soldiers into Chad to repel the Chadians that had come into our territory uh, to kill our people. He did so well. This was in the early 80s. And I wonder why the same man is not in a position to prosecute a war today. Let me make this last point. Just the other day, a week or so ago, Cameroonian troops entered into Nigerian territory in the name of hot pursuit. They leveled a whole town in Borno State, killed about 70 of our citizens. The government did not even acknowledge this. Nothing was said about it. And no warning was given to Cameroonians, no, no reprisals, nothing. And I just don't think this is the sort of thing that we should be doing. The president has a duty to comfort our people, protect our people, fight the war, lead us from the front, tell us the truth, and get down to the job so that we can be proud of being Nigerians all over again. And by the way, he should also, he should also get the local government areas that he lost. He should get them back quickly and clear the whole of Sambisa Forest. So what do we make of the command center moving to Borno State? Well, I don't think it's made any difference at all. I wish it did. You know, I, I think this, you know, it's, this, this, this is a far more uh, sophisticated war than the, you, you can't determine the end of the war by where your command center is. But that's, that's a decision they made, and because or, you talk you know, about, I'm all for it. The I'm most asking important you thing this. for me is the results. It's well, not... I'm asking you this because you say that, you know, the president should lead from the front. We've seen the army chiefs there over and over again, you know, leading their troops. In fact, we've heard that the chief of army staff leads his troops, you know, in battle. And you talk about leading from the front. One will wonder, how do you reconcile the two? Well, the truth is this. It's the result that matters. It's not the strategy. I don't mind how they do it. Whether President Buhari moves his office in the villa to Maiduguri and rules the country from there in the name of trying to fight Boko Haram, if that's what it takes, let him do it. Or whether his chief of army staff works from there. Whatever it is, that's their decision. They are in power. It's their choice. What do I'm concerned about is the, is the results or the results of their actions. Do you know we when... We must have results. It's all well and good to say... Do you know and, when and we're Chad, not seeing those results. Do you know when Chad pulled out of this alliance, as it were? Are you sure of the time that Chad pulled out of the alliance? Of course I'm sure of the time. Chad pulled out about, a, about what, about a month ago or so? Check the records. They've pulled out. They're not part of, they're not part of this alliance anymore. That's a sad development. I don't take any pleasure in that. And I think it's wrong on their part. And by the way, I think, I think Chad has a lot of questions to answer. Why do you think so that I'm happened? So I'm not on the Chadian side. I, I'm a Nigerian. Why did that happen? Well, you have to put that to the Chadian president and to our president. But that's the fact. But, you know, obviously something must have gone wrong. And I think it's a tragedy. All right, Chief Ami Fanikaide, uh, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, so there you have it. We'll uh, be back in just a moment. We'll have another perspective on um, some of the matters coming up this morning. Don't go away.